What is up Earth's Mightiest Subscribers? It's Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about Blue Beetle number one, written by Josh Trujillo, with art by Adrian Gutierrez, and color by Will Quintana. This is honestly probably the issue of DC Comics I have been the most excited to see. And I know a lot of people can say what they will or won't to about the Blue Beetle movie. I'm honestly not here to talk about that at all. So if that's what you're here for, you have come to the wrong place, at least as far as my overall opinions of the movie. I did a whole blurred cave talking about it, so you can go check. Go check that out. What I'm here to talk about is the Blue Beetle comic. Blue Beetle number one kicking off Jaime Reyes once again with his own solo series. And in this one, he's back. He is badder than ever. And I love that, you know, we're once again, because, you know, a lot of the last bit of your know, last crop rather of Blue Beetle stories have been written by Josh Trujillo. So there's going to be a lot more consistency here with you know, coming over for Blue Beetle graduation day. And it's almost as if it picks up almost right where it left off, though it actually doesn't. And it's been a little bit of time since the end of Blue Beetle graduation day, but the plot threads from that are still large and in charge. The Horizon, who are basically the nicer version of the Reach, the very same conglomerate of aliens that created the Blue Beetle tech and armor. Well, there was an alternative to that, another faction of the reach called the horizon and these people were more peaceful and not warlike the way the reach are normally depicted and in graduation day and honestly i have a whole video breaking that down if you want to go check it out it's up here but the long and short of it was that the horizon were fated as coming to earth to take it over and it was believed that they were the bad guys they were aggressors when in truth they actually weren't the horizon had gifted beetles well i say gifted but in a roundabout way these beetles it kind of just found these people and took them over but uh the two new beetles we were introduced to during graduation day dynastus and Natita, they had become the bearers of horizons versions of the scarabs. Nitita and Dynastus are now working in tandem with Jaime's Blue Beetle. So it's almost like we've got this kind of VR Troopers, Common Rider style trio setup going on. For those who know I'm talking about Common Rider, there was always uh, a primary rider and then usually end up with like a secondary rider and a tertiary rider. And sometimes there was four or five more riders depending on the series, but that's neither here nor there. Point of the matter is Jaime has a squad now but it's not working exactly the way Jaime wants because Natita and Dynastus, while they are capable and powerful as their versions of the different Beatles, they don't have the training and the experience that Jaime has. And it's easy for people to forget, Jaime's been in the game for a while. He's been a superhero for a while, so he knows what to do. He's battle tested. He has been through the ringer. He has been killed on more than one occasion and come back from the dead. He knows what it's like and what it takes to save the day. He's thinking about all the things the Dynastus and Natita are not thinking about. They're not thinking about not causing as much you know, destruction and collateral damage as humanly possible. They're not even really thinking about where their allies are in connection to where they are so that they don't accidentally hurt them in trying to hurt the bad guys. And I like this dynamic because it proves that, yeah, and, and it's a trope I know that some people don't like, you know, people like to throw around the term Mary Sue, which honestly, can I level with you guys for a moment? If you think that only some characters are Mary Sue's, let me sit you down. Every fictional character that you have ever read, watched, whatever, they're Mary Sue. The character is always able to do things that honestly most people probably wouldn't normally be able to do or become good at things that honestly would take people way more time to be able to accomplish being good at. But the point here is, is that Josh Ryu is taking the time to show his work. And I think that's the thing that gets lost in translation when a new character jumps on the scene and it seems like they're just automatically good at everything. I think we sometimes forget that there's time between the moments that we see them in panels. Not every you know, time we see them is literally just seconds after we saw them last. Sometimes there's months in between that. And sometimes there's training that we don't get to see. And we're kind of seeing that here. Natita and Dynasus are not good at this yet. Yeah, they can whip some ass, but they're not good at saving the day yet. And that's what Jaime is there 
to do. He's there to help them get to that level that he's at. That's something Ted Cord even goes as far as to say himself that you were like them when you first started, but now you're not, and you are the best person to teach them how to be just like you. I wanna put this out, this is not the first time Ted Cord has put genuine respect on Jaime Reyes's name, However, this is one of those moments I really like because it kind of honestly reminded me a lot of the time of how we would see characters like Miles Morales and Peter Parker over on the Marvel side of things interact where when Miles was feeling down on himself and feeling like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be Spider-Man, whatever, Peter Parker comes along and says, no, you're Spider-Man. I like seeing the old guard, you know, reach out to the new guard and be like, don't try and be the next me, be the next you. And I feel like this was such a great and genuine moment. And honestly, that is why I was worried for Ted Kord's life. And rightfully so, because we are introduced in this comic to a new beetle, a red beetle or scarlet beetle, if you will. This is something I was actually wondering if you Trujillo would actually do, because I talked about this in my video for graduation day that I wondered if maybe he was gonna bring over characters like Black Beetle. And whoa, well, we haven't seen a Black Beetle yet. We definitely see this Red Beetle who we don't have a name for yet. Let me cut my own self off. By the way, I'm future Blur Without Fear, cutting in on present day Blur Without Fear because while I was editing this video, I stumbled across an interview with Josh Trujillo where he made the reveal that the character in question is named Blood Scarab. This character's name is not mentioned in the comic itself, but in this interview it is, and Josh Trujillo has revealed that this character, Blood Scarab, is someone who has ties to the original Blue Beetle Dan Garrett, which would lend some credence to why they did the whole prologue deal reminding readers of who was the original possessor of Kaji Da, the Blue Beetle Scarab that gives Jaime Reyes his power. Beyond that, I don't really have any idea what that connection could potentially be because admittedly, while I'm a huge fan of Jaime Reyes's Blue Beetle, and I like Ted Cord just fine. I never really knew a whole heap of a lot about Dan Garrett other than the fact that he existed and that he actually was able to use the power of Kaji Da when Ted Cord could not and Jaime eventually could. So yeah, I don't really know how all that's gonna play into this. I will say I'm pretty sure this won't have much to do with the New 52's Blood Beetle. With, you know, God bless anyone who remembers Blood Beetle. But yeah, I don't know if any of that's gonna actually have any you know, bearing on any of this, but I'm sure something will come up to some degree uh, or another. I know some people are probably thinking the low hanging fruit is that this character is very likely Brenda. I don't think that's the case. If it is, it would be really weird. But then again, Paco was Blood Beetle for uh, New York Minute, so who knows, maybe that's the case. I hope we're not taking old leftovers and reheating them and throwing them in this comic, but we'll just have to wait and see. Also, while future Blur Without Fear has your attention, I've noticed looking into the historical record of the past, you have not clicked that like button and you have also not clicked subscribe and tap that notification bell so you can make sure that you are always up to date with all my videos breaking down comics like this one, Blue Beetle, as well as other comics from DC and Marvel and wherever else. So make sure you do that. Anyways, handing the reins back over to present day Blur Without Fear, let's get back to the video. They're obviously evil. There's no ambiguousness uh, in that. Like in graduation day, it was debatable whether Dynasis and Natita were actual bad guys until we got to know them. And it could be the case here, but this person, whoever this new Beetle is. They look like a whole villain. I love the drip on this character because it reminds me a lot of you. Know, I've talked about Common Rider, and I'll probably anytime I talk about Blue Beetle, I'll probably talk about Common Rider. But in Common Rider, there is often a trope that when you get a character that has a cape, you just know something foul is about to go down. And it kind of took me back to Common Rider Double, which is one of my favorite Common Rider series. I highly recommend it if you can find a way to watch it. I don't promote piracy, but if a company will not provide you with a legal way to watch something or you know, read something, consume something, whatever, you might have to put your straw hat on. That's all I'm saying. However, the thing I love about this is that, yeah, he has the cape flowing in the wind. He's got the big red laser sword. He seemingly kills Ted Kord. I don't honestly believe Ted Kord is actually dead. Uh, I don't believe that, but I don't think he's gonna 
to be long for this earth. I mean, if anything, he might survive. Ted Court has all kinds of crazy technology that could honestly keep him from dying. I wouldn't be surprised if he were able to ignore the clarion call of the pearly gates, but Jaime just slick lost a mentor. And I feel like that is going to be massive because he and Ted Court are really close. They're cool with one another. They're boys. You know, and he's been very much like, I think, you know, say what you will about, you know, Ted Cord as a Blue Beetle, but I feel like of any of the superheroes in existence right now who could be mentoring younger heroes to take on their mantle, I feel like Ted Cord is probably one of the better ones who has handled it particularly well. Rip for Ted Cord. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, do the YouTube thing, like, share, comment, subscribe, and make sure you tap that notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any of the videos that I put out. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, let me know what you thought about Blue Beetle number one. Keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments.